Welcome to the Fermented Homestead. If you're new here, my name is Anna, and on this channel, I'm sharing our journey of learning how to turn our home into a homestead. Welcome to day 18 of the Every Bit Counts Challenge. Today, we're gonna be taking the taking the next step in the suet process. Like you'll remember last night, we, we cut them into, we thawed it, cut them into chunks, and then put it in the freezer. So now we're gonna take it out, grind it up, and I'm gonna show you, show you kind of vaguely, how I'm gonna turn this into suet, into rendered suet, I should say. We're also gonna soak some beans for tomorrow's project, and then I'm thinking about later on today, uh, we're gonna go do a little cleanup in the yard outside because, um, I tend to leave things where they are and I don't wanna do that. <laughs> so I might bring you along for a little cleanup outside. We'll see how it goes. Depends on how hot it is, all the things. Let's go get the suet out of the freezer. So you can kind of see, like I didn't leave these here, but like it'd be nice to have them cleaned up and put in our actual wood pile. You know, some cardboard boxes. There's, there's just some basic clutter. Like I just need to do some decluttering out here. And I think Robert would definitely appreciate it. Oh, there's my man right there. Heading out to chop some wood. Check on these guys while we're out here. They're all just chilling. They got food, they got water. They got fresh bedding. Malachi put down a fresh layer of bedding. He does it about almost every day, sometimes every other day. It kind of just depends. There's a lot of birds in there. Probably coming up here this weekend, I would say. I think I'm gonna figure out the fencing for this and I've, I've pretty much decided we're gonna go ahead and just use the Premier netting and just not not turn it on because they're too fat and lazy. They won't even try to break, they won't even try and get in there. And I'm not, they're gonna, obviously they're gonna be in the coop at night so I don't need to worry about nighttime predators. So let's get this stuff. Frozen solid, good to go. Alrighty. So. I feel like I need some more light. It's not very bright in here. I feel like that's better. Okay, so we have our meat grinder. I I have my KitchenAid and um, I have this, it's like the plastic KitchenAid grinder. Okay, put it on there, pop this guy in its place. There we go, okay. So now, I am going to get you a good view. Let me show you kind of real quick what I'm doing here. You can use a regular crock pot with this. My particular crock pot, it just runs too warm, so I don't like to use it for this. It, it'll kind of like, it, the lowest, absolute lowest temperature is like a simmer, and that's not what I want for this. I want something that is going to be like just a barely maybe a trickle of bubbles. You're basically just warming this up and melting it, especially when you're using actual suet and not like body fat. This is, you're literally basically just melting it down and there'll be a little bit of particles left. When you're doing body fat, you're gonna have a lot of bits left behind. And that's where you get like what we made yesterday with the chicken fat and the skins. You'll get kind of that leftover uh, protein bits with this this particular type of, of beef fat you're not gonna get much, at least in my experience. You know, whatever. Anyways, so, wash my hands. So we're gonna turn, you're not gonna be able to hear me very well, so I'm gonna say what I'm gonna do ahead of time, but I'm gonna turn the, the I'm gonna, hmm, I am going to turn on my blender to like a kind of a lower medium heat, and we're just gonna run all of this stuff through here, okay? So that's all I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna run all of this through. I'm gonna turn this the crock pot on so it can kind of start the process and hopefully hopefully this won't take more than a few hours. We'll see. Uh, if it were body fat, it would be a totally different story, but this is suet, so it, like I said, it melts a lot quicker. So we're just gonna turn on slow cook mode.
you can see in here you have all of this woo, you can see in here you have all of this kind of brown almost foamy looking stuff and those are like the the, the stringy bits that hold the fat together and um you know just some other things like there are some some pieces that have blood in it and so that will be kind of skimmed off so we're just going to let this slowly warm up and it's literally just going to melt it and everything left we're just going to skim off and skim off and give to the chickens uh, but the rest of it is going to be perfectly good shell stable fat. You guys can see this. This happened almost immediately. Like it's just been kind of chilling here. I like to sterilize my jars before I do this because you don't actually can it. Like you don't like run it through the canner. So I like to sterilize my jars, get it nice and clean, and then we'll dump them into the jars. And but I haven't started that process yet. So let's do it. Sterilizing jars, I realize maybe not everybody knows that this drip pan is far too small, so I have to switch. Um, but you just, you gotta put something of like a, a cloth or something in the bottom to protect the jars. And you just put them in the pan here. Probably more than I need, but I'd rather, I'd rather have and not need than to have to sterilize more jars. I can't fill this up with one hand so hold on put a lid on it bring it to a boil let it boil for like 15 minutes or so and then what are you shooting in the camera oh okay <laughs> so then you're gonna put the oh you're gonna put the cover on it or you're gonna put the lid on it and then you're gonna bring it up to a boil you're gonna let it boil for like 15 20 minutes something like that and then voila you have sterilized jars and in this case, since you're doing the fat, you wanna make sure you dry it off completely. Usually in that case, once they've been boiling, they'll dry off very quickly. So, there. So we have our uh, canning funnel on top of a sieve on top with um, some cheesecloth. And we're just gonna start pouring up and filling our jars. You can see all the nasty stuff that's in here. That was too much crap that's gonna overflow. We'll use our four jars lids here. These ones you crank on there. Like, pretty good. Not like fingertip tight. So this is what it looked like. I, I did do a bit of a test batch here without straining through the cheesecloth. And you can kind of see the little particles here. Hopefully that won't happen here. But um, so this one, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're not gonna keep this one shelf stable. So we'll just put the last little bits in this jar. And with this, I'm not gonna let it strain, drain itself. It's not like broth or something like you're gonna lose the ability to um, squeeze it out because it's gonna solidify. So I'm gonna push it out. I'm not gonna go crazy, but. And I don't know if you have, if you're gonna, if you're gonna keep this on the shelf and not like throw this in the fridge, I would, I would definitely recommend using a fresh lid. All right, so we're, whoa, hello. We're gonna leave these on the counter Overnight, probably sometime tomorrow, we'll go ahead and um, in tomorrow's video, I'll show you guys what this looks like. But for now, we'll just leave this here. We're gonna head outside and do that cleaning up. And then we'll come inside and soak our beans for our video tomorrow. The plan, I'm gonna go grab my gorilla cart and then I'm just gonna fill it up. I'm just gonna walk around and grab everything that's not where it belongs and put it in the cart and we'll see how far we get. <laughs> I have a I have a future organization plan, um, organization project in mind, but I'm still kind of mulling it around in my head and trying to figure out how I want to do it exactly. It's going to be a way to kind of keep my gardening stuff kind of more organized because that's um, something that I struggle with. <laughs> I'm, I'm not the most organized person in the world. I love to organize, but I really struggle staying organized. And um, that is something that if I can figure out a way to stay, keep organized that makes sense, that's convenient, that's easy, and um, something that I, I want to stick with, 
think that would be very beneficial for me as well as my husband. My husband is a complete opposite. He loves organization. He loves things being organized, put away, clutter drives him crazy. And um, so I'm hoping to be able to find some way to make us both happy. I'm not ready to deal with this pile, okay? Like, I moved some of the pieces and I found this. So, I'm just, I'm not prepared for that. So that pile gets to stay there for a couple of days. Annihilated by bugs tonight. It is like off the chain, it's crazy bad. So I'm just gonna go and pick up the garden area and then um, probably do one more wheelbarrow load and then um, just call it quits. It is the evening time and it's about the time that I need to uh, start soaking these beans so they'll be ready for our canning project tomorrow afternoon. We're not going to soak these for the full 24 hours. I'm converting a recipe that I found on Pinterest. We're going to convert it into a canning recipe. So I'm kind of guessing here. <laughs> All right. The recipe calls for canned Great Northern beans, I think it is. So I'm pretty sure these are Great Northern beans. I don't have them marked, but they're just they're big white beans. Same thing. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and set these to soak overnight so these will be a little bit more gut friendly. So, um, soak some beans with it. Oh gosh, oh golly. We're hunting for stones. Now we need to add the vinegar to this. And so we're gonna add in, it's it's supposed to be, I've heard two different terms. One is uh, two tablespoons per cup of beans. And I was watching a video today where it said one per tablespoon. And that was from the Weston A. Price Foundation. So I'm gonna go with one. There we go, quarter cup. Mix it up. Lots and lots of water in there more than enough. You don't want to do this with like an aluminum pot or anything that's reactive. Uh, this is a stainless steel pot, so I'm I'm pretty okay with using it. So that's really all there is to soaking beans in this particular way. It's a little bit different than I did last time in each individual canning jar. If you guys are new around here, we just moved to our 30 acre homestead in Southern Missouri. We're transplants from Washington state. I'm bringing you along and sharing with you all the things that we're doing to turn our home into a homestead. I also like to do all kinds of videos on food preservation, canning, freezing, dehydrating, and fermenting as well as uh, bring, showing you guys how you can actually include the how you can actually include those preserved foods in your everyday cooking as well as showing you how you can include it in your everyday life if that sounds awesome to you make sure you hit this button here this is the subscribe button this is what tells youtube you want to come back here up here is a video that mr google pants thinks that you're going to enjoy this here is my last uh every bit counts challenge video and then up here is my every bit counts challenge playlist check that one out for all the awesomeness since the beginning of august See you next time. Bye.